In this video we're going to discuss MPLS or multi-protocol label switching. So let's compare the routing tables of CE1 and CE2. These two routers are in different VRFs. So this is CE1, here's CE2, show IP route. CE2 sees the loopback of CE4. CE1 sees the loopback of CE3. CE1 can ping the loopback of CE3. CE2 can ping the loopback of CE4. These customers are totally separated from one another, even though they use the same core MPLS network. This is kind of like VLANs at layer three. So CE3 sees the loopback of CE1 or router six. CE4 sees the loopback of CE2 or router seven. So in the same way, it can ping 7.7.7.7 and CE3 can ping the loopback of CE1. Networks are totally separated. Now it's quite a lot of configuration to get MPLS working, but service providers would be automating this configuration. The bulk of the configuration is done on the PE routers. So on PE1 once again, this is the configuration of the network. We've got VRFs configured. We've got a loopback configured. We've got a core MPLS interface. We've got customer interfaces in different VRFs. We've got, in this example, OSPF to customers. You could use EIGRP or RIP or static routes to customers. We've got core OSPF. We've got core BGP, that's IP version four. VPN v4, and then we have address families for VRFs, blue and green. That is how you configure MPLS, layer three VPNs. I'll just show you the Ceph tables. This is the core Ceph table. Notice we don't see 8.8.8 .8 .8 as an example here, but if we look at the Ceph table for the blue VRF, notice we see a different set of routes. And if I look at 8.8.8.8, .8 notice you can see that two labels are used for that route. So show MPLS forwarding table. We see an outer label to get to the loopback of router five. Notice the label is 18, but the VPN label is 17. So this label will get us to the egress router, which is PE2, and this label tells PE2 which customer VRF the traffic belongs to. So two labels are used. The VRF label is advertised via BGP, and the next top label is advertised via LDP. BGP initially looks very complicated, but once you get used to it, it's very scalable. It's used throughout the world and layer three VPNs are one of the popular implementations of MPLS. Again, you don't need to know the configuration of MPLS for the CCNA exam. I've simply added it here so that you can see a proper implementation of MPLS. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.